Hello and welcome to Casual Leaves. So I don't really have a spot today here because in front is our Philanopsis orchid and I'm going to talk about this today uh, in as much detail as I can with whatever little I know and I just want to talk about the plant and a very basic beginner's sort of a guide over here not even a guide but just uh, things to know uh, when you buy your first orchid or you're planning to buy the first orchid which i highly highly recommend i think i will try to shoot this video a bit differently because i don't think the both of us can be in the same frame <laughs> so before i do talk about the orchid here i very quickly want to show this beautiful arrangement uh, that i've got uh, i went all out with this one i really wanted a very beautiful pot for this very 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 beautiful plant and i just went for this combination of this dark pink purple dark lilac violet sort of orchid color along with this beautiful dark teal green pot with this golden rim and as i talk about this i also have to warn you about a little story that i will be sharing about how did this happen so a little story coming up in the end <laughs> for that if you're interested uh do watch it till the end uh the objective here like i said is to talk about some basic know-how about orchids and uh, how they even make a perfect gift for yourself or someone else and a lot of people really don't know much neither did i and i have gone and read up as much as possible seen as much as possible on youtube and on other on, on other forums and i thought it'd be great to just put all the information about it at one place so people who are starting with their orchids have a good point to start with so let's begin with it uh, also, I do recommend a very good heavy kind of a pot for orchids because uh, typically these come in these transparent pots uh, as you may have seen, uh, I'm sure. So orchids always come in these transparent pots so you can have a look at the roots and the media and overall health of the plant which comes from the roots. So it's very important to get some heavy kind of a pot for it uh, also because the flower spikes which is basically the stem uh, typically these are very long and they are always droopy by design as in that's how they're meant to be so they typically keep falling over tilting over so it's very important that when you buy your orchid you do buy a good planter and invest in it because that's really important for the health of the orchid okay so let's start with overall anatomy of the plant uh, orchids can be divided into for ease uh, three different parts that i'm going to talk about uh, the first of course are the roots uh, any orchid that you may have seen will have these crazy wild green gray silvery kind of fruits and they are typically very wild in nature they're going all over the place and that's uh, the, the core of the plant uh, that's how the plant actually attaches itself to uh, a tree uh, typically orchids of these type Philanopsis orchids and others uh, other hybrids complex hybrids uh, attach themselves on tree trunks and they kind of wrap themselves around the tree with the help of the roots uh, they are epiphytes and that's how they function that's how uh, their genes are that's how they are made so if you typically see an orchid it will kind of attach itself around the tree trunk or, or any other media also so that's how you see it in the container uh, there are a lot of orchid uh, roots which are wrapping themselves around uh, the media in this case i have here our cocoa chips uh, these are really good for the roots because they retain the right amount of moisture that it needs uh, though i have seen people use leca uh, equally works well uh, i have seen people use sphagnum moss again works very well 
but the way the watering happens kind of changes with that or the intensity of watering changes with that so uh, i don't think anyone needs to really worry about that in the beginning and since we're talking beginner level stuff here i don't think we really need to worry about reporting or the kind of media initially when you get your orchid just go with the media it comes in uh, you do not really have to think about changing it right in the beginning uh, we will come to it at the later part of the video that when do you report as well uh, so the roots if you see are very green in color uh, however the roots which are exposed to the air or you may see on the top they look quite silvery or grayish or even white uh, at times uh, now that happens when the roots are ready to get some water and that's how you actually know how to water your orchid uh, whenever the roots become grayish or whitish or silverish that's the sign that you need to water the plant before that you really do not need to water the plant because you are going to cause rot on the plant it won't do well at all so just wait you have to observe and that's why the transparent containers are given so that the plant owners can see the roots and decide when the watering is needed uh, coming to watering itself what kind of water should you use is very very important for orchids uh, i have read that it requires soft water it doesn't do well at all with hard water because hard water has a lot of salts minerals and a lot of other additives which can rot the roots and even the leaves of the plant soft water is best suited for them or if you have a ro at home the reverse osmosis water that is really great for them but ideally without added minerals uh, that's the kind of water it likes so filtered water is good uh, so be very very careful because whenever this water touches the roots or the leaves it will cause either stains or rot for sure which you need to avoid at all costs an interesting part about the orchid roots is that it is coated with a substance called velamen if i'm not wrong uh, velamen is this uh, kind of uh, a, a coating on the top of the root uh, it is sort of like a transparent coating uh, which you can't really make out but it is actually given to the plant in order to absorb water really well now when this coating is new and the root is new and short in length it won't really absorb the water even if you put a water droplet on top of the root it's not going to get absorbed but as the root becomes longer and you can test it by putting a drop of water on the root it will quickly get absorbed and that's the reason why it's put so, so that the root can absorb water in all possible ways and all possible sides of the root so that's a very very interesting thing i found about the orchid roots at times you will see certain roots going yellow like this one over here it is not really a problem because the roots are not really responsible of uh, doing photosynthesis uh, so it's fine if they go yellow which means there is a bit less of chlorophyll in them but at no point it means that this root is still not doing its work it is still doing the work of providing uh, water and nutrients uh, to the rest of the plant so you don't really need to worry about it uh, other way of knowing whether you need to water your orchid yet or not is to observe if there is condensation uh, in the roots in the pot so at times you will see some signs of condensation there will be some water droplets that uh, you can see which means that there is still time for you to try and water the plant uh, typically uh, every 5 days i would say 5 to 6 days but it also depends on which part of your home have you kept the planter because if there is a lot of wind draft then of course the roots may get dried up sooner coming next is the the crown of the plant which is actually the leaves now if you see uh, the leaves are kind of growing in an axis like an upper side uh, you know they kind of grow upwards and then they kind of start uh, rolling uh, turning outwards and actually a very cool uh, analogy given by Sean from Oni Plants I really like that one was where he says that the leaves kind of uh, grow outwards in order to almost as if hug the sun and that's how they grow they grow in the direction of the sun in the direction of the light uh, so they are always kind of flaring themselves outwards and trying to grow in in a way that they are almost hugging the sun so that's pretty <laughs> like a cool thing and even like backwards they go and try to kind of uh, wrap themselves around the the tree in nature of course so that's a very good uh, way of representing and knowing why the leaves grow the way they do another very important part is actually about uh, when you're watering the plant 
you must avoid water getting in contact with the crown of the leaves at any cost if you put water or pour water from top of the leaves it will get stuck and it will immediately cause root rot in case of orchid plants uh, the leaves are designed in a way that they repel water and they should never be uh, stagnate with stagnated water and uh, but if you water it from the top from your watering can or you take it to the sink and you're dropping water all over it's going to cause root rot uh, it's going to cause leaf rot plant rot and fungal infections uh, to the orchid plant so avoid that at all costs whenever you're watering it make sure you're watering it from the sides and you're not getting the rest of the plant wet Another interesting thing about the leaves again is the back side of the leaves. Uh, the back side of the leaves have a lot of pores from which the plant actually breathes the air and takes in nutrients from the air that it needs. So be very sure that the underside of the leaves also does not get wet. And even while cleaning the leaves, I have seen a lot of people just clean the top of the leaves using a wet tissue or just clean it like a regular leaf. But be always aware to not rub the bottom of the leaves because you will end up clogging the pores of the leaves which will not be great for the plant. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is that these are white spots from probably fungicides that the sellers spray uh, after, uh, during uh, when they put these plants for sale. So it's totally fine. You don't really need to worry about it or start cleaning them up. It's fine if it's there because a lot of times uh, it creates a lot of fungal problems for the plant right in the center of the leaves. So if it stays, it's actually fine for the plant. Uh, at times you will see that the bottom leaves are yellowing and dropping off which is totally fine uh, if you lose one third of the leaves which is like two three leaves in your orchid plant but they're the bottom ones it's actually normal it's pretty fine you don't have to worry about it but if the top part of the leaves are getting yellowed then there's definitely an issue and you must diagnose the plant the other thing to notice is how firm or limp the leaves are that is another indicator about how your plant is doing if your plant is doing well it is going to have firm leaves because the leaves are everything for this plant uh, after the flowering season and when the flower spikes have uh, fallen the blooms have fallen it is actually the leaves which decide and depict the growth and the health of the plant uh, even when the plant is in the vegetative state which is when all the leaves have gone off it's actually going to give you reblooms it is going to give you flowers again but you have to take care of the leaves and the plant itself uh, there are flowering months uh, in some countries in some countries it actually grows all year long in fact the thing about orchids is that it will grow all year long uh, is what i have read so you can actually uh, try to induce blooming on it uh, do not throw away your plant if the blooms have fallen uh, it's very normal and you can definitely get your plant to bloom again uh, if there are old leaves which are at the bottom you may very well remove and throw them because you don't want to leave them sitting there to rot you want to avoid that at all costs uh, this is exactly what the axis looks like this is the front of the plant uh, these are the sides the internal sides from where actually the flower spike comes this is the spike uh, this is what we call the stem but it's actually called the flower spike on which you get the flowers and you will also see some roots coming out but these typically come from the sides they never come from in between of the plant so that is another thing you can watch out for uh, because at times people get confused with what is a spike and what is a root uh, so if you're seeing some new growth the way to know is that if it's coming from the face the front of the this is the face of the plant it will mostly be a root but if it is coming from in between the two leaves that's probably going to be a flower spike when you are buying your first orchid try and buy a one which has either multiple flower spikes like mine has one but then it does have three different branches on top and a lot of uh, flower buds are there uh, so when you're choosing your plant uh, make sure you go for the one with the maximum number of stems or spikes or branches uh, sub branches and a lot of uh, buds which are there because these will bloom uh, for example this one here uh, when i got the plant this was actually closed like this bloom this blood this bud over here but in the last two three days it actually opened up which was quite surprising for me because i was expecting that none of these buds are going to open up so i'm pretty hopeful that the next one would be opening up as well which is probably this one here or even this one here uh, if you provide the right care, uh, be very, very sure that the flowers will bloom in fact. So I think it's a very, very rewarding plant in that sense. Uh, the kind of beautiful 
blooms you get it's totally worth uh, the amount as well not to say they are very very expensive i think uh, recently they are quite affordable and you get them in like nursery shops and malls uh, you don't even really have to go much you know farther away to find them a lot of people are selling them in grocery shops these days so do go for one uh, totally recommend it uh, the next thing i want to talk about is some of the buds uh, which kind of dry up and they fall down so for example this bud over here uh, this is expected to dry up and fall down so does the one at the end because you can see how they've changed the colors uh, i do believe even this one maybe going through the same thing now this process is called bud blast where a few of the buds will sort of dry up and fall down uh, but that typically happens when the plant has experienced some sort of a trauma so trauma could even be from uh, you know bringing your plant back from the store to your home which is what happened in my case i had a really long travel time to bring this plant home which also led to <laughs> this broken plate here but what i want to say is that it is totally normal the, this happens all the time where one or few of the buds will fall down and that's a natural phenomena for the plant but as you can see some of the other buds have totally opened up so don't worry about that uh, the trauma can also happen when uh, watering is not consistent and when you haven't really followed the right care routine for it so that's another reason why you may see bud blast happening uh, but you can always change the conditions for your plant and give it the right set of care and it will uh, not really affect the overall growth of the plant the next thing i want to talk about are the nodes these are at every few inches on the plant uh, you can see a little sheath on each of the node uh, some of them don't have it some of them have it some of them have them opened up uh, like something like this this here is a spent node uh, but that's where the last bud blast happened there was a bud over here which fell down so this node has been spent uh, nothing can happen with that node it will never push out a new flower or a new spike but if we kind of see these nodes which are still intact uh, after your flowers have fallen off and the blooms have been spent in order to propagate the plant or to induce rebloom you can actually make a cut half inch above a non spent node uh, that will help the plant push out new growth so for example where all my flowers have bloomed and they have fallen down and the spikes are now empty flower spikes are empty i can actually take a call and decide from which node i would want to chop it off so for example on this stem i might as well cut it one on one inch half to one inch above the node uh, I can even do it here we can even do it on the main stem but in this case because there are three different stems I can actually go for here here but maybe not this one because this node is spent so this stem may not actually give me much in the future so I might just chop it off after the flowers have fallen off so that's how you actually propagate uh, not propagate you rebloom your plant I will come to uh, propagation. In order now. to propagate the plant, the process is the same as reblooming, like how we spoke about chopping off the stems above the node. You do exactly the same thing, but instead of getting a new flower spike or new set of buds, you will actually get a keiki. A keiki is basically a mini plant which starts growing in the middle of the stem. So wherever you make your cut, if the plant wants to propagate itself and wants to give a fresh new plant, it will actually start pushing out a new baby plant which will be a baby version of something like this. So you will start seeing leaves coming from the node where you make the cut, you will start seeing roots roots coming out of it and that is actually a very very beautiful process I will try to insert some pictures to show how beautiful it looks and when that keiki is ready you can actually replant it after it has established itself a bit you can actually put it in a different pot and take care of it and you will very soon have a new plant coming to the lighting requirements of this plant uh, it really likes bright indirect light but it also likes moderate indirect bright light so this is the spot that i have taken for my phalaenopsis orchid it is that far away from the window and it does get good light in the morning no direct light whatsoever but some people like to keep it in a slight morning light which can fall a bit on the leaves but be sure, uh, wary that it may 
cause stains of light on the leaves a part of the leaves may get light green other parts may get dark green so you want to avoid that but overall this is the kind of lighting that i give to the plant right now and i'm sure it's loving it because like i said uh, this bloom opened up after uh, reaching home it took uh, a couple of days but it opened up and i'm expecting the others also and that will kind of help me understand if this spot is right for the plant or not but this is the kind of lighting it likes it likes indoor lighting it is an indoor uh, blooming plant so just make sure that it gets a decent amount of moderate indirect bright light the last bit is about the fertilizer uh, while the seller from which i bought the plant said it does not need any amount of fertilizers ever and i should not give it any type of feed i have seen other views uh, from other people where they do say that you must give orchid fertilizers to them so that is something i'm gonna watch uh, over myself I will see how the plant is performing, not performing and at some point get a dedicated orchid fertilizer and try to give it that in, in some format whether through a spray bottle or through the water uh, but that is something even I need to sort of deep dive into and understand whether it's necessary or not. Uh, maybe my seller has added something into the media which does not require fertilizing uh, and is more of a commercial kind of uh, arrangement where people don't face problems with their orchids and they keep blooming so i will have to really watch out for that uh, but anytime you buy your orchid do ask the seller if it requires any type of special fertilizers uh, these orchids have been dubbed to be the most complex hybrid plants. Uh, they have been hybridized a lot for easy care. Otherwise, actual orchids which uh, thrive on other trees in their natural habitat would not really survive indoors. And it's very difficult to take care of their roots and leaves and the kind of requirements they need. Uh, but these are hybridized so much that you will now see these being sold in grocery stores and malls and places like that so that it becomes very easy for uh, new beginners to actually own an orchid plant which is in itself a good thing uh, there are a variety of colors a variety of patterns and options and sizes available for orchid plants so do check them out uh, before you add them uh, you can choose actually the one which you like and adds character and color to your home decor uh, orchids are more about home decor also in that sense because it's a good long-term uh, flower which you have in bloom all the time uh, my seller told me that these blooms can last for more than a month up to to more than a month depending on when did the flowers bloom so when you're buying it do try to take a look at the flowers uh, how fresh they appear or uh, ask the seller when did they bloom and how long he's expecting the blooms to last uh, then pick up the plant of your choice Coming on to the last part of the video, which if you want, you may skip because this is just going to be a little story about my experience with the orchid. So uh, to be very honest, it was a very, very rough kind of a weekend. And I decided to just go to this uh, mall where there is a very beautiful nursery. Uh, so it's more like a controlled environment, a very nice almost as if indoors nursery but it's outside the mall it's like covered and everything and they've got a good collection of plants and my mom had been behind me to get an orchid not an orchid any flower that blooms because she's tired of my house plant collections uh, she feels why am i collecting all the plants with so many leaves on them and no flowers so it was on my mind to get one of the orchids because that makes for a good indoor house plant uh, which does bloom which does give you beautiful colors and flowers and and that look which comes with flowers so thanks to her that i actually decided to get it uh, otherwise i could never really justify buying it but it's actually worth it is what i feel now however uh, i went uh, to the nursery shop in the mall and i got this really beautiful uh, planter set and i was uh, coming back uh, to my home but then i decided to go to, uh, to my mom's place first and i went there and i'm in a cab and i'm holding the stem because they are so delicate you need to keep holding the stem in your hands or all the flowers are going to just <laughs> get damaged or break or fall down so i'm holding that and we are going i'm reaching home 
I reached home and then I decided to go elsewhere and I'm taking the whole thing with me. I'm carrying all my luggage and the plant and one more plant, which is a separate video. Uh, I got two plants that day. So I'm again back in a cab and I'm trying to go somewhere. And then we have a little accident where the car hits another rickshaw and then this whole thing fell down. And for a moment, I thought I've lost my orchid as well. It would have all broken up. But luckily, the plant was fine. The planter was fine. The plate wasn't. So I have to sit and kind of glue it all together. But the point here is that uh, plants uh, kind of are more important than uh, the look we try to give them. Uh, the planter was becoming a bit more important for me, maybe. And I was just very happy in that moment that the plant is safe and the plant is fine and the rest of the things can be fixed. And about having a rough day and then going to a nursery, we all can relate to that. <laughs> We all know how they can actually make us feel better. And that's that's what they did for me that day when I could go and uh, choose to buy the plants I like and I want to add to my collection. And that feeling kind of gets left behind with us. Uh, even while taking care of all the other plants and all the plants around us, it kind of reminds us that things are good, things are fine. And it helps us focus better on other things. Uh, so while taking care of our plants, we are actually trying to, you know, think about other things that are going on and how do we want to go about our lives. So thank you so much to the plants <laughs> and the house plants and uh, to the nurseries and to the sellers for getting such amazing collections for us. And that was it for this video. The objective was just to have a collection of beginner uh, you know, insights on the orchid plant. It is very new to me. It was very new to me, even now it is. And I think I've learned a bit more. Uh, there are some really good channels on YouTube for orchid plants specifically. I think Miss Orchid Girl, if I'm not wrong, that's the ID. You should definitely visit that channel and have a look at the videos. Uh, Sean from Only Plants has a good uh, set of videos on orchids. Uh, I really have gone and absorbed information from there and tried to put it in my own way uh, to you. So I hope it helped and I hope it will make you go and buy an orchid because it really does add a very nice uh, touch a very soft touch to your collection uh, totally worth it totally recommend it and thank you so much if you watch the video till the end uh, do subscribe to the channel do hit the notification bell and if you can do me a favor watch the next video and i'll see you next time bye